My name is Crystal and welcome to my channel, Crystal Speeds. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're a return viewer, I appreciate your continued support. Before we continue with part two of my story about how almost dying twice changed my life, I just want to let you know that I have an announcement. So stick around until the end of the video so you can find out what it is. Without further ado, let's get into my story. The saying goes that man plans but God plans best. That has been the story of my life. Before my close encounter with death in sixth form, my high school journey was also challenged with my reality of almost dying. Blessed with the rewards of my hard work and faith, I was basically a straight A student and a top performing student at my last school. When I made the transition to Manchester to complete my high school journey, when I started attending Manchester High School. Determined and focused, I continued with a harmony of daily revisions, late nights trying to read ahead and keep ahead of my assignments. It was like I was still attending high school in Kingston. All was going well to fulfill my dreams of ending high school on a high note, when suddenly the pain struck. I tore the muscle in my right shoulder. Being a dominant right hand user, this was a painful and difficult experience. Enduring a swollen shoulder with sharp pain pricks of pain along my nerve endings, further inflamed by the slightest movement, the medications weren't helping. Before I knew it, I was homebound for a month. Numerous doctor's visits. I learned that the muscle on my right side was weak due to scoliosis and I would have to take vital actions henceforth to overcome the challenges that it would bring. Yet, I never gave up. The moment the pain became bearable, I was back in school, spending later nights and longer days catching up on the missed notes and assignments. Summer came and I had faith. I encouraged myself that the hard work I would put in would reward me with higher grades and my Caribbean secondary examination or CSEC as we call it, it would be a success. The hint of trouble brewing started when I had to miss a few days volunteering because I had the flu. Like every Jamaican, I was using rubbing alcohol, drinking lots of water, and having Panadol. And later, all seemed well. But, like the calm in the storm, better led to worse. I developed a fever that wouldn't break. I remember feeling so hot one day that I poured water on my arm trying to cool down but the droplets that rolled off they felt so warm. In quick succession I was bedridden, barely eating, losing weight, battling the aches and pains of even the slightest movement yet I still prayed and I had a small smile on my face. This too shall pass, I thought. The day I went to register for grade 10, my final year in high school, was the day I went to the hospital. From the long, painful night dozing off waiting on a tough bench to early morning, trying to get comfortable. While I was connected to the ever-changing IVs in the accident and emergency room, 
because there was no bed space, I leaned on my mother, encouraging her in her panic and worry, daughter she shared her strength with to do the smallest and slightest task. I won't share some of the alarming challenges that I encountered and observed in a hospital, but my message to every caregiver is that I encourage us in the blessed position we have to impact a life, to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. But what I'll definitely never forget, it was that cold shower. Around one o'clock in the morning, as the shower went, my tears flowed with it. I cried out at our desperate attempt to finally, finally break the fever. Tired and weary in body, mind and soul, I spent the night surrounded by the pains and cries of the ill. To this day, I remember that hospital smell. Everything took a turn for the worse. After the brief moment I had returned home, that same night, I passed out. A couple hours later, I was rushed back to the hospital to battle the dengue that made my platelet count so low. I'll never forget the caring doctor. Eventually, I was released to go home, the shell of the person I was before, to recover from the depressing and pain riddled experience, weeks left, two weeks to resume school as the days counted down, and the pale, sickly version of myself started school to the shock of those who didn't know what happened. Little by little, I regained my focus, increased my determination, and prevailed through the stress to hasten to complete labs, school-based assessments, prepare for tests, and to study for my final exams. In spite of the shoulder pains and my weaker immunity, the Lord, He gave me strength and the support I needed to aid me during this challenging time. I once used to carry books in my hands because it was just comfortable. Now I had to do so to lessen the load. My friend, Deborah, she was the extra hand who carried some home so that I wouldn't have to. And she returned them only when I needed to use them. When drawing from my lab works became too hard, she helped me to draw some of the images so that I wouldn't have to worry about completing my school-based assessments. They were the heartwarming support of amazing teachers, including my fourth form block supervisor, English teacher, history teacher, form teachers, and later when sixth form came, even Mr. Taylor. All of these persons and countless others, they were thoughtful. But I highlight these persons with their thoughtful gestures because I'll never forget them keeping my school back so that I wouldn't have to walk around and bear the pain of carrying the load. My principal, with his constant calming presence, his voice of encouragement and humble support. Oh yes, the prayers, the brother Paul, the brother Bachelor, the supportive teachers, my family members, friends, so many persons who sent her prayers in addition to my prayers and God answered 
our prayers. I ended my high school journey passing all of my exams. You haven't watched part one of my story about how I almost died twice, you can check up here or up here and you will find the link to the video to check it out. Now for my announcement. Because I want to continue to create a great experience for you when you watch the videos and I want to make sure that I'm uploading them always on time, I have to take into consideration the challenges and the demands of my time for the other things that I have to ensure I get done. Hey, in the future, things may change, but like I'm encouraging you, I have to take my advice too. And from my experiences, I know how important it is to do so. And so, thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this video. If you've enjoyed what I had to share, well, I hope that you go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell so that you will always be alerted whenever I post a new video. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments about what you'd like me to share in my next story time video. I'd have shared briefly how it is that I was actually basically an A student. If you'd like to learn what the journey was like for me, going from one who was an average student who really didn't believe she was that bright, to one who became an A student and top student in my high school, then you can go ahead and let me know or suggest any other videos down below that you'd want me to share. I'm also looking forward to talking to you on my Facebook account at Crystal Speaks and on my Instagram account at Crystal underscore Speaks. Until next time, take care, keep safe, and every day aim to be better, to do better, and to live your best life. Thank you.